Hi everyone, welcome to day 3 of the 10 on 10 series. In the previous session, I had asked you a homework regarding bacterial vaginosis in which we wanted to discuss the criteria. Well, there are two criteria, number one being the AMSELS criteria and I asked you the percentage count of clue cells under it, which should be more than 20%. The other one, which is very famous and asked a lot in the exam, is the Nugent's criteria, both of which happen to be for bacterial vaginosis. Now, I hope all of you are following the daily or the alternate day telegram quizzes, which are topic-wise, and the remaining days we are going ahead with YouTube sessions. So in case you're not aware, you can take a screenshot of this timetable. Today's class is again going to be questions and images combined. The first question is a continuation of the last YouTube session in which I told you a table which will save you a lot in the exam when it comes to different hemoglobins. Over here, you have a child who's come with recurrent chest infections and abdominal pain. There is a history of delayed growth and bone problems causing facial changes. There is also involvement of the liver probably there is icterus or maybe it could be a hemolytic anemia because of which jaundice is there and there is mild splenomegaly. Electrophoresis is given. You can see there's a spike of fetal hemoglobin and very little of adult hemoglobin. They've given a child. They've not given the exact age but that almost a more than 90% fetal hemoglobin is not what you are suspecting unless you're dealing with a case of thalassemia major and that is why we selected beta thalassemia which tells me that the facial changes related to it must be the chipmunk facies classically seen and then because it's a hemolytic anemia that is why the patient is having jaundice and because of thalassemia there is delayed growth so now everything comes into place and like I tell you, told you for beta thalassemia major the fetal hemoglobin should be more than 90% whereas if you're talking about beta thalassemia minor then the HbA2 levels have to be more than 3.5% well it is obvious that major is going to show you all of these clinical manifestations because thal minor is usually asymptomatic. Moving on to question 2, recent exam question again. Anticoagulant used in green vacutainer, we've always learnt it as green is hara and hara is heparin. So heparin is going to be the one that the answer over here but that's not how it was asked recently. Recently they asked you what are the things that can be done in a green vacutainer. Number one, you can do arterial blood gas analysis. So yes, in the anesthesia department, arterial blood gas analysis, heparin. Second, serum electrolytes. I know there's a lot of controversy around this but you should be knowing that serum electrolytes as per the textbook should be collected in the green vacutainer when the green vacutainer is not available like in most of our labs it's not readily available then we can be going in if green is not there then we go in for yellow so many of you had a confusion what to mark in the exam you always mark something which is written in your standard textbook so that is green if not there in the exam then you mark yellow vacutainer moving on to question three over here what is the disease or lymphoma in which ki67 is nearly 100% and the answer is Burkitt's lymphoma. So please note these are all the questions that can come to you for Burkitt's. It is usually seen in an African child, reason being that Africa is endemic for Epstein-Barr virus and Burkitt's lymphoma is associated with Epstein-Barr virus. The most common location where the child presents with this lymphoma or the swelling is a jaw swelling and we see the classical starry sky appearance. You can see everything is very dark like the sky but then there are some white white cells which are shining in between which are referred to as the stars. Over here, it's a Burkitt's lymphoma. Do you know the lymphoma component is actually the background that is the sky? The stars that you're seeing in between, the whitish colors, are actually the macrophages. Now coming to the question, KI67. What is KI67, also known as MIB1? That is a proliferation marker. How much is the tumor dividing and proliferating? And when I say nearly 100%, this means it's a highly proliferative tumor. Well, the only question left is translocation. We know Burkitt lymphoma is translocation 8 with any even number chromosome so it could be translocation 8 and 14 it could be translocation 8 and 22 it could be translocation 2 and 8 8 with any even number chromosome is Burkitt's lymphoma moving on to question number 4 what is the biomarker in patients with medullary carcinoma I know always for thyroid you read thyroid papillary carcinoma but you can get questions for others as well for medullary carcinoma 
it is going to be calcitonin please note that these are some quick buzzwords for every thyroid cancer that you have to know you know there are four papillary carcinoma follicular carcinoma medullary carcinoma and anaplastic carcinoma out of them the excellent prognosis question papillary carcinoma the worst prognosis question anaplastic carcinoma what else for papillary carcinoma how can you forget the classical orphan anii nucleus where the nucleus looks completely white as if it's washed out orphan anii and because it's papillary how can you forget the samoma body remember in the last youtube class i showed you samoma body photo that is seen in papillary carcinomas this is said to have most common mutation previous year question is the braf mutation and it spreads via the lymphatic so papillary carcinoma of the thyroid will always come with lymph node enlargement because it spreads to the lymphatics on the other hand follicular carcinoma if someone asks you what is the most common translocation or mutation ras mutation so for papillary it is braf for follicular it is ras for papillary the lymphatic spread was there and for follicular this tends to go into the blood hematogenous and once it goes into the blood it can go to any part of the body which means it can also spread to the bone which was the last year fmg question bony mets is seen with which thyroid cancer coming to the next what i asked you over here medullary carcinoma if i ask you in terms of mutation it is going to show you the ret mutation and of course tumor marker is calcitonin if that calcitonin becomes an amyloid it is a cal so a cal type is what is going to ultimately form moving on to question number 5 which of the following organisms is associated with macrocytic anemia now macrocytic means maybe b12 deficiency and that is diphenylbothrium latum so these are some path micro standard questions if they say hookworm hookworm is what ankylostoma hookworm causes iron deficiency anemia whereas diphenylbothrium latum which we always study as diphishobothrium latum because it is associated with fish or fish tapeworm this is going to cause b12 deficiency or megaloblastic anemia which is a macrocytic anemia and the answer over here five questions are done let's move on to five images here we have a chronic smoker with a lung mass this is a classical photo of the azopardi effect which means it becomes the small cell lung cancer or oat cell carcinoma what is azopardi effect this is actually a blood vessel but a blood vessel should have been blood red in color here the blood vessel is coming out to be blue in color and the reason is that all these tumor cells around all these cancer cells they are breaking they are breaking and their dna is coming and getting attached on the blood vessel so this is the dna of the cancer cells which is making the blood vessel blue azopardi effect world remember for small cell question 7 shipyard industry even without an image i know i'm dealing with asbestosis but what is this image this is the asbestos body over here i can see the brown color asbestos body but why is it blue in color over here because the asbestos body is going to be covered with iron that is why i call it a ferruginous body and for iron the stain that i must have used is the pearls or the prussian blue stain what's characteristic is the shape i hope you didn't forget this is the classical dumbbell shape which brings me to today's homework today's homework is that what are the two things which are also dumbbell which virus has a dumbbell dna and which is the urine crystal which is going to be dumbbell in shape coming to the next one classic spotter banana shaped heart you can't go wrong with this hypertrophic cardiomyopathy you will always get a question of that 19 year old football player basketball player who suddenly collapsed that sudden death sudden collapse banana shaped heart hypertrophic cardiomyopathy versus if i give you a history with a classical photo the only picture of this on the internet in the books that is a ninja star nucleus which cardiomyopathy are you thinking of then it is dilated cardiomyopathy so these two pictures are a must know banana shaped heart for hypertrophic and ninja star for dilated coming on to the last which is actually a surgery question you have excruciating pain as a history and there is definitely something near the nail bed when these two things are there which tumor do you think of glomus tumor glomus tumor is what kind of a tumor it's a kind of a vascular blood vessel tumor and the two buzzwords are that the location will be angul nail bed it is below the nail bed very tiny tumor in size hardly a centimeter or so but excruciatingly painful for the patient that is a glomus tumor well with that we wrap up today's session i hope you will be answering the two homework questions in the comments and i will be following it up as well and tomorrow of course we are going to go ahead with the telegram quiz